Hello and welcome to On One Effects 2021. In this tutorial, I want to give you a tour of the On One Effects interface and show you how to get started using presets and how to manually add and adjust filters, kind of the core things you're going to do in On One Effects. So here we are in Effects. I've opened up a photo. I could open this from any of the plugins if I'm using it as a plugin for Lightroom or Photoshop or Aperture or Affinity or Corel or Capture One, you name it. Or if I open a standalone photo, it's all going to look the same. We're going to start here in the main user interface. Over here on the left hand side, you're going to have a list of tools. These are the tools that you can use on your photo. If you mouse over the tool, it'll tell you a little bit, but a little bit how to use it. And these are the common tools you're going to use. Things like cropping your photo, retouching to remove spots, adjusting the preview to zoom and pan, and making local adjustments. Let's start off using the crop tool to recrop our photo. When you select the crop tool, you'll see a crop overlay on top of your photo, and it is divided up into the one third rule squares to help you with your composition. Simply just grab the sides of the corners to adjust the shape in. I want to adjust this one so I really have the pairs on kind of a consistent background. So I'm just going to move this in till I get rid of the board on the left hand side or really kind of the essence of that board on that side. I'll do the same over here. There we go. That looks a bit better. And then I can adjust it a little bit more to taste. I think I want to make it a little bit more square. Now, if you really want to control the aspect ratio of the box, if you need to fit a certain print size where it says freeform, you can pick from any of the predefined crop ratios, or you can always type in a ratio into the width and height fields. Once you get everything set the way you'd like, just hit the apply button. There you go. You've cropped the photo to a more pleasing composition. Now, also over here in the tool are other retouching tools. I want to use the retouching tools to fix a couple spots in my photo. One, I see a little pebble or something here in the foreground. And also when I took this photo, I had a little piece of double stick tape holding the pear in position so it wouldn't tip over. And I see a little bit of that white spot down there at the bottom I want to remove. So I'm just going to grab the retouching tool. There's several different retouching tools. The user guide will go into greater detail about them. The one that I use almost all the time is the healing brush, the very first tool. The reason I like it is it lets me pick where the pixels are going to come from they're going to fill it in so i paint over what i want to remove it's going to automatically find an area that matches but i can move it around see as i move the green source pixels it changes what fills in the destination area so i just move it around until i get a filled in area that i like and that of course is non-destructive i can go back and i can change that at any point in the future let's grab a couple other distractions there's kind of a big knot in the wood right here that i don't like so I'll just paint over that. Again, just fill the area that looks the best. It's another little spot over here. There we go. And of course, that one that I was worried about, the little spot right here along the bottom of the pair. There we go. All right, there's our results after we've done all of our healing, removed all of those annoying spots. Now it's time to get to work on the stylizing. For me, most of my stylizing starts in the presets. To open up your presets, if you don't have them open already, click on this little button down here in the bottom left. And that'll open up the preset drawer. Presets are organized inside of categories. Inside of each category, you'll see what the different effects will look like or the different presets will look like on your photo. It's very handy. It's an easy way to go shopping for different presets. And there's a really vibrant community where you can get additional presets. If you go to our website, you can find more. You also get loyalty rewards of additional presets all the time. And there's more that you can purchase in the on one store. What a preset is, is it's a stack of filters. The way that effects works is by stacking filters. If you come over on the right hand side you'll see an add filter button and when i press on that you'll see there are a ton there's like 30 different filters all of these filters you can stack on top of your photo you can control their order you can adjust their properties and you can control how they blend by using blending modes opacity and masks think of it like stacking filters on your camera lens it works the same way let's say you put a polarizer and then a warming filter and then a graduated neutral density filter it's the same idea, but in software with way more options and control. And those presets are really just a recipe, a stack of those different filters. So let's start with some presets. I'm going to go to the culinary category over here. It's a food shop. Seems like a good place to start. So when I click on the category, you'll see your photo now with the different presets applied. Now, if you can't make your decision on these small thumbnails, you can click on the quick view browser button up here 
and this will open up a larger preview. You'll actually see your photo with the different options applied to it. And if you find one you'd like, you just simply click on it. Now, kind of like this one right here, where the background is cooler, but the foreground and the pairs kind of keep their color. So I'm going to select this one. There we go. Now, when you add that preset, if we look over here in the filter stack, you'll see all of the different filters that have been added to create that look. It starts with the curves at the bottom and on top it has stacked all of these different filters. And you can turn each of these filters off one at a time to see how they affect your photo. So there we are, we're back at the original. And if I turn each of these on one at a time, you'll see how it makes its adjustments to the photo to get to the final results. Now you can adjust the entire preset by using the little fade slider on top of the preset that you added, or you can use this master opacity slider up here. They do the same thing. They're basically gonna fade all of the filters all at once. So think of it like a giant strength slider to pick really what you like. So I can use that to make a chorus adjustment like this to dial in the overall effect. I can then go to each of the individual filters and make adjustments if I want to as well. I have one in here called Vivids Up, where it's taken the vivid colors in the photo and made them more vivid while leaving the less vivid colors more muted. What I want to do is I want to come down, I'm going to grab my yellow color range in this case, and now I can shift the hue of those pairs back and forth. See if I move them to the left, they're going to get warmer, more ripe, and if I move them to the right, they're going to become a really vivid green color. So I can really dial those into just the color that I want them to be. So I'm going to shift them just slightly more green for my personal taste. There we go. That looks pretty cool. All right. That's really the basics of getting started with on one effects. You'll open your photo up, do your cropping, remove any dust spots that you need to, then find a preset that you like and adjust the contents of the preset. Now in other tutorials, we're going to talk about how you can selectively blend the different filters and the local adjustments by using the very powerful masking tools. We'll cover that in a separate tutorial. Once you've got your photo where you want, just hit the done button to save your results. All right, thanks for watching.